And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a die rolling and placement game. One that I've had in my collection for a very long time but haven't reviewed. We're going to take a look at Alia Iacta Est by Rio Grande Games. Uh, it's a game for two to five players about uh, an ancient Roman theme in which you're rolling your dice and trying to get different combinations of dice in order to earn the influence of different buildings to try and score points. Uh, so real quick, we're going to take a look at what you get inside the box and how the game plays, and then we'll come back here and get my final thoughts on Aaliyah Iacta Est. So here you can see the setup for Aaliyah Iacta Est. Now we're looking at a four-player game. Uh, we're going to look at this because the rules are the most straightforward for this. There are a couple of modifications uh, in different pieces that you include or don't include in a three- or a five-player game, but we're going to look at four for simplicity purposes. Now, what you're looking at here is each player is going to have a set of eight dice, these dice over here. And they're going to be placing these dice on these different buildings. We have the Templum, the, the Senatus, the Castrum, uh, the Forum Romana, and then the Latrina. So you're going to be rolling your dice. You're going to be playing over a set of, uh, well, they call them sets. Uh, you'll be rolling your dice. Each player will do this at the beginning of each turn. Now, each set will be divided into several turns. Uh, the number of turns is indeterminate. It depends on when somebody gets rid of all of their dice. So just for this purpose, I have rolled uh, Green's dice. I'm not going to roll everybody else's dice, but... Green, being the starting player, has their choice of placing dice anywhere they want out here. And these different buildings are going to give you different benefits. But in order to place on them, you have to have different combinations. In order to place on the Templum, which everybody can do during their turn if they want, you have to, as the start player or the first player to place there, place one die. If you place one die, you take one of these tokens and you'll set it in front of you temporarily. So they'd take this. Now, the next person that wants to place there has to place two dice and they have to add up to more than the value of the one die that was there previously. So they'd have to place two dice totaling more than five. So this player could place a four and a three if they wanted to, if this is where they wanted to place on their turn. Note, you can choose to place on any building on your turn. It doesn't have to be the same building as anyone else. And then the next player would have to play three dice totaling more than seven. If green ever wanted to replay, they would simply have to play the appropriate number of dice to bring their dice up to the total, which is one more than the previous player, and play a number of dice that increases their pips over. So now, if green wanted to take this over, they would have to play a couple of dice that added up to at least two more. So that's how that's going to work, and as you take these, uh, the player who played two dice would take two of these, and so forth and so on. The uh, player who plays three dice would take three. So that's the Templum. The Senatus here, you have to play a run. Now a run can be one die, so let's say yellow maybe wants to play on the Senatus, and they place one die. The next player to place here can place any run they want, so long as it doesn't exactly match yellow's run. So they can't just play a one, but they could, for example, play a one and a two. All right, and that would be the next longest run. And they don't get anything yet, we'll resolve this building later. The cast room requires you to put, out, put down sets of dice. Now it could be any set of dice, let's say blue wanted to play a six here. Now, you can never have two of the exact same six, uh, sets, so green couldn't play one six, but they could, for example, play two sixes. This prohibits blue from, on a future turn, making this into a group of two sixes. They can't do this because these two sets are identical. But they could add two more sixes to make it three sixes, which is not the same. And, of course, you could have something like two fours, or whatever you wanted on here. So that's how the cast room works, and it will let you get these tiles down here. We'll cover that shortly. The form Romanum, when you place dice on your turn, you're going to place any one die or any two dice that total exactly five. So, for example, green has a three and a two. They can place the three and the two, and you're always going to place them low number left to high number to the right. And so the next player to place there, if they played, for example, a one and a four, which total exactly five, this die would push these dice over, and this die would go all the way to the right. And if dice get pushed off the end in this way, they're going to go into the latrine. So you'll see eventually people can fill this up, either by adding single dice or dice that total up to five, and they'll push them off into the latrine. Now, that's how you place on all of these buildings. During your turn, you're going to place on one and exactly one building. So when you roll your dice, you're going to place on one building. And when you've done so, the next player will go and place on one building, and the next player will go and place on one building, until everybody is placed. Then you're going to pick up your remaining dice, so let's say you know, green did this, and blue uh, did this, and maybe yellow did this, and um, we have this from the gray player. And then everyone would re-roll all of the remaining dice, and they would go through another round of placement. And when you do this, you're going to go through the next round of placement, you're going to place dice on wherever you want, trying to earn various different favors from all of these different buildings, until one player places their last dice. Die. 
Uh, and in the last round there, that round would finish out with everybody having a chance to play, and then you'd go into a scoring round. In those scoring rounds, you're going to score each of these different buildings, starting with the Templum. And you've already picked up these tiles, but on these tiles, on the reverse side, you'll see that they have points. So these are both ones. But there are higher point value tiles. We can see twos here. Uh, I believe there are even some threes and fours. I have a hard time remembering sometimes, but there's a three right there. Uh, so some of these tiles are better than others, and the more you pick up, the better chance you have of getting a good tile. The player who has the largest grouping of dice on this board gets to keep two of the tiles that they've taken and they'll flip those face up in front of themselves to show that they've got those points uh, and they'd return the rest of them to the supply face up. Each other player that has at least one die here gets to keep one of the tiles they've picked up, flip it face up and return the rest of these over to this pile and if this pile ever runs out you shuffle them back up and you have a new pile. So that's this area. On the next building, the Senatus here, the player with the highest total, uh, the highest run, basically, so the most dice, and then if there's a tie, the highest run, is going to take three of these Senate tiles here. And they're going to look at them. Now, these tiles have different benefits that all relate to scoring in some way. So, for example, actually, this one here is just a neutral province, which I'll cover shortly, but you can put any one guy in this area. But this one says, uh, for each three of these little tiles that you have at the end of the game, you get two points, and it's worth one point itself. This one here that says for each married couple, you'll get one extra point at the end of the game, and it's worth a point itself. And some of these are actually provinces that you can use to score points. They look like this, and I'll cover how those work shortly. But no, you'll be able to put a yellow and a pink patrician in this area in order to score some points. And if you do so, it will be worth three points itself. So they'll grab these, and they'll pick one of them. They'll pass it to the next player who has the next highest run or the next longest run, and that player will take one. And then the last card will go back on bottom of the deck. The Castrum, the first choice is going to the player who has the biggest grouping of dice, and then, of course, it tie, if there's a tie, for the highest number. Uh, but they're going to choose one of these provinces. So you'll see they have different colors. Uh, and on these different colors, they have numbers. So this Egyptus is worth one point, this Britannia is worth one point, Hispania is worth three, and Macedonia is worth four. So you'd probably choose the four if you had the highest grouping, and you'd put this in front of you for use later. But it may depend on what patrician tiles you picked up later. So uh, basically, in order down from the top, whoever has the largest group down to the smaller groups is going to pick one of these up. Any leftover dice from any of these areas would get moved into the latrina, and I'll cover what that happens there shortly. But if you don't get a tile from either of these two areas, you get pushed into the latrina. So you're going to distribute those to the players that get them, and then you're going to move on to the form Romanum. And from left to right, whoever has the first die in this column, which will likely be a one, to whoever has the last die here, which could be a three, it could be anything else, but who knows, you're going to choose any one of these patricians from underneath the form Romanum, and you're going to take that into your area. Now, you want these patricians to match up with the colors of the provinces you have. So you'll know there's no pinks down here, so it's going to be hard to fill that, but uh, the person who got the tannish one here, the Egyptus one, has a good choice of picking up a three and a two. You'll also note these patricians, some of them are female, like this one, which is worth three points, and some of them are male, like this one, which is worth two points. Each of these provinces can hold a male and a female, a married couple essentially, which will score you points. So for each one of these, you're trying to place the patricians into them. That will get you the points for the area, and it will get you the points for the patricians that you place in them. After you've resolved this, you're going to go into the latrine, and each player that has dice in there is going to get a number of these reroll tokens equal to the number of dice they have here. And then everyone will take their dice back, you'll reseed the whole board, and you'll start another round. And you're going to play five rounds. Now at the end of the game, you're going to get points, as I said, for each of these provinces you have equal to the number printed on them as long as you can put one patrician in them. If you can't put a patrician in them, they're worth one point less. Each patrician you're able to put into an area, each area can hold a male and a female, will give you the points printed on the patrician and will make you score the higher number of points for your provinces. In addition, you're going to get any points on these tokens that you have left over here, so these tokens right here, and you're going to get any bonuses you have from your uh, senate tiles. And whoever has the most points will be the winner. Now. I told you that there are these special tiles in here, uh, these ones right here. You'll see that they allow you to house two different colors, but it still has to be a male and a female, and it will give you more bonus points for doing so. So collecting these tiles, collecting the little tokens over here that get you victory points, collecting good provinces and matching them up with the appropriate patricians over a series of five different rounds will make you the winner. Well, there you have it. That is Alia Iacta Est by Rio Grande Games. Two to five players, uh, pretty simple overall in the terms of you know, learning the rules, but uh, the strategy that it has is kind of interesting to me. It's a game that I like quite a bit. Uh, there's multiple reasons for that. One, 
I really like the reroll chips. If you do poorly in a round and your dice get kicked out into the latrine, you're going to get a reroll chip for each die. So if you do very poorly, you're going to get these reroll chips. And those will allow you to reroll dice later, which will allow you to get better combinations in order to better place on buildings in future rounds and, you know, kind of make a comeback. In addition to that, I like the rolling and placing dice and then rerolling your dice after your placement. Uh, there's a good reason for this, not only does it allow you to re-roll your dice and get better combinations, but as you're placing, there's an incentive to place a lot of dice if you can. Uh, the reason being, if you place your dice uh, and you do really well in rolling, it's going to make it difficult for everybody else to get good combinations to place, because if you go out, the end of that round is the end of the round period, not, not just for you, but for everyone. So if you manage to get rid of all of your dice and everybody else doesn't manage to get rid of theirs, then they don't get to place those dice. So there's kind of a little bit of a race to place all of your dice. Uh, I like the fact that you're going after several different areas and you're trying to best optimize how to get the right provinces and how to get the patricians to go in those provinces. Maybe you're going to focus on getting senate cards or maybe you just want to focus on getting the tokens uh, from the templum and get a lot of points that way. So uh, there's a lot of different options to go after, a, a good amount of strategy, uh, some good recovery mechanics if you're not doing well, and all in all I think it's just a very well designed game. So if that sounds good to you, check out Aaliyah Iacta Est from Aaliyah Games and Rio Grande. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>